my favorite groups. Um, some years ago, I shared this with you, okay? I was in prayer, and I never forget, it was in 97, about 21 years ago. That's when I lived at 512 area property. That building, of course, is no longer up. Um, I was in prayer from 12 to 1. And I'll never forget, I see their faces like in an open vision. I said, Lord, what are you saying to me? He said, They're coming to Buffalo, and I'm going to make a way so you can go to their house. And I heard of them, had all the albums, CDs, and all that stuff. Had never been to none of their concerts. concerts. And I had, was doing here, and I had stopped doing here. I was going to put it down because it was part of the intervention. That was, that was very, very, very difficult to stop doing, but I did it anyway because I, I didn't want God to get me. So <laughs> I went down. That was very, very, very hard. Um, so the last customer came in and she wanted, if you can remember, finger waves or sponge from top of the fence roll in the back. If you remember that hair, it's all you good. So she got her hair done and she gave me a tip. And the tickets was. Paid twenty five or thirty dollars. She gave me thirty five dollars. Right. So I called somebody. They came to the house. They bought me a ticket. They gave me the money. Went to the concert, and there they were. And he said, "I told you, I would make a way for you to go to that concert." Mm -hmm. And so that church, that church was tore up. Right. That, that the anointing of what they carry, their songs have uh, ministered to me a lot. That song, particular, I listened to that song for a whole year. I think, I think the cassette would be ripped in half because we still doing the cassettes. I thought it just work, but I only got the CD. So, yeah. so certain songs do minister to certain people. There's traditional gospel, and then there's uh, contemporary and then traditional. Some people like traditional, like the choir, and then some people like singing groups. Certain songs minister to certain people. So those certain songs that you hear me listen to. Those are the songs that brought to right now. You shall be holding. That's a, that's a worship song. Vicky Wine. Another song that brought me through a lot of stuff. So when you hear this to certain songs, I said, mm, I remember that. And the Bible says, but don't consider the things of old. But I say brought me through. When God tells you he's gonna raise you up, and it looks like nothing's happening and nothing's moving, you better believe when he tells you that it's gonna happen. Yeah, that's why I listen to certain songs. Well, today we're coming from the beginning. Genesis chapter number one. To those that may have their Bibles, Genesis chapter one, if you've got your cell phones, iPads, tablets, you can turn it into, you know, that's why you answer the phone. But, uh, Genesis chapter number one. Chapter one. Yep, yeah, the beginning. Genesis chapter number one, we're going to start at... Um, Verse 26, 27, and 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 27, and 28. The Old Testament. teaching and teaching God's people he said make sure you say the chapters and verses these two or three times even if everybody don't know the Bible and it takes some people a while it's a learning process so you have to be real patient as a beginning amen? Amen. Amen. amen amen verse 26 says here and God said let us make man in the image our image and in our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and of the air, and over the cattle, and of all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God said, Create man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female, created he them both. 28 says, And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Amen. 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 The fabric and the gifting of mankind. The fabric 
and the gifting of mankind. First of all, we'll start with the name God. That's the one that made everything. Uh, God is creative, but no one taught him. He was always alone. But he created all this in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. God had a mindset to create mankind. He had a mindset, but yet he's holy, separate from his own, his world. Yet he sits on the throne. Yet he's pure, he's righteous, he's compassionate, but he chooses to make us, make us. He chooses to call us out of our mother's womb. That's a tailor, or nothing like we're dust, dust of the ground. We're mm -hmm. nothing but dust. And when you're dust, he breathed upon the dust. And he made it out of clay, forming man and then the woman out of the rib. They all was together as one. Have you ever seen couples, every time you see them, they're always together? That's like going into the place called Eden. And the author is Moses, what we call the five first uh, books of the Old Testament called the Torah. They have become spiritually educated. When you study this text, study who, when, why, how, those four pieces, and you'll get an understanding. Some people don't understand the word, and some people do. So when you become a believer, ask God to enlighten you about the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Don't be a novice and just read a scripture and run with it. Take time and dissect the word and understand it, not to your own knowledge, but the knowledge through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is considered the second Adam. Jesus Christ is considered the second Adam. He came to fulfill the law from the Old Testament to the New Testament. But back here, Jesus made, I mean, God made us in his image and in his likeness. Yes. He made us. And he made us to be somewhat perfect until Adam did what he did. And this is not to crush the woman. Everybody keep blaming the woman, Eve, because she listened to the serpent. But the reflection goes back to Adam. But you allowed your household to become dysfunctional. Every woman is not a weak. And we got four women, five women sitting up in here. Mm -hmm. So I dare not crush the system. So, <laughs> I want them to be served. But anyway, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't discredit women. I don't believe in doing that. You don't do that. Men have a flaws just as well as a woman does. Yes. And until that, since that incident has taken place, it has been a shift of men blaming women and women blaming men. But if you go back to the beginning, Adam, it was his fault. Because you allowed your wife to go out and deal with a serpent. Always remember this, Satan can tell you a lot of things. But most of what he tells you is a lie. Yes. He's the father of all lies. Everybody can't get in your ears and speak into your life. The enemy can whisper some things to you and make you believe it's the truth. And she believed what she heard. Remember this, when they was made in the image and in the likeness, the glory of God rest over them. They didn't even know they were naked until they ate from the tree of knowledge. And, and God told them, don't touch that tree. Yes. Sometimes God tells us things two or three times, and we still disobey. They were not cursed. They faced a predicament. Man would never have to work to the sweat of their brow. But we have to now because of Adam. Women will have children, easy labor. Half the children just come right through them. But now you've got to be a labor 10 and 15 and 20 hours of labor to have one child because of Eve. Those are not curses. Those are predicaments. Repercussions because you failed to hear God when he was ministering to you. They failed to listen. You always have to develop a spiritual ear to hear God's voice. As I told you a couple weeks ago, there's three voices. The voice of God, the voice of the enemy, which is Satan, and then the voice of your flesh. Servants have a forked tongue. Some years ago, when I first got saved, I would close my eyes to Copeland and look at people, and I would do like this. God, what is they saying? And I would literally see two tongues coming out of one mouth. And I said, Father, what is that? He said, that's a serpent. They have a lying spirit. Well, I mean, clear. And it was people that I respected in authority. 
And I could tell, I was looking at him like, uh uh, did you just lie in church? Did <laughs> <laughs> I just tell you they had a forked tongue? That's a forked tongue, shaped in the form of a fork, but they have little handles. You can bend handles. That's a lying tongue. Don't allow the enemy to get into your ears. Be tailored, be fabric, be that which God has called you to be. But he also gave them dominion. He gave Adam dominion to rule that place where he lived. And the glory of God rests over them. But because you allow the enemy to come in, the enemy will always take you off the path that God puts you on. And that's what happened. They left the path where God placed them on. People can deceive you by words. Yes. Let mm -hmm. somebody keep promising you things and it don't happen. Mm -hmm. Those are lies. Yes. Yeah. Have one tell me, uh, 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 Elder, uh, Pastor Newman, uh, uh, you need to keep in contact because uh, I want you to come in and I want you to do a three day revival. That was a year and six months ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that door ain't never opened yet. Mm -hmm. So guess what he did? He lied. Mm -hmm. A lie comes from people that you will never suspect. Thank you. It's bad to face your, your trust in people. This is one thing we have to learn as believers. Stop putting your trust in flesh. Because people can trick you, deceive you, lie in, make you believe. But anytime God promises you something, it's never a lie. Amen. God promises you something, it is in the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Yes, it is. And it'll come to pass just like he spoke it to you. Oftentimes he may not speak an audible voice to you. He may get in your dream and show you something. Oh, yes. And it'll come to pass. Well, that's God speaking through a vision in the night. But they had the glory of God and they left the path where God had the law because they was deceived by a serpent. Now back in the Old Testament, serpent stood up. Mm -hmm. He was cursed from the ground. And now he swerves. Yeah. Go to certain countries. Even in North Carolina or South Carolina. Way back in the bushes, you will see snakes. Mm -hmm. Going up yeah. in the cars, going in your house, got to get in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bam. Yeah. <laughs> my friend said she was in the house and killed the snake right in the living room. Oh, Lord. <laughs> mm. Yeah. A lion, a snake can always kiss his way into your pathway. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all got that spiritual sense too. You can tell you meet certain people, something ain't right. Mm -hmm. You start shaking your head, though. That ain't you doing that. That's the Holy Spirit in life. You tell you know what? You're right. It is something wrong with them. I was somewhere. I mean, I told you about the rest of my situation. As a young man, I meet people all the time as a minister. We were talking about dreams and we were talking about visions. And all of a sudden, I said, God, there's something about him that's something. Something ain't clicking here. And then he went into the areas of, oh, yeah, I do believe in burning here, uh, burning candles. I'm like, well, what type of spirit is this that we look at? We're dealing with? What is this? What is he talking about? And one night I had a dream. He had on makeup on his face as a clown. <laughs> he wasn't serious. He was clown. He was not serious about the things of God. Those was his own spiritual rituals. And before I knew it, that friendship had ended with several other people because he was a liar. God will let you know who you're dealing with. I always tell people, pay your dreams attention. Those are messages. That's to get your attention. To invite you know what somebody around you is not who they say they are. Sometimes God let you see what your own family. And people say, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. He let you know. He let you know. When people trying to con you and trick you, he let you know. Yes, Lord. Pay your dreams attention. But back to Adam, he gave him dominion to call the, the, the fish by its name, the beast in the field by its name. That's the type of authority that God has given us. But don't ever take God's authority for your own self will. God can use any of us to preach, teach, prophesy, sing. But we, we start getting into self. And that's what happened with them when they lost their place. Self got in the way. But and when you have an authority resting over you, back then, what we say, the mercy of God rests upon them. There was a cloud that rested upon the men in the Old Testament, what we call the Shekinah glory. And God's mercy covered them uh, for priests, kings, and prophets. 
Moses wrote this book when he was a prophet. And he dealt with the children of Israel. And he had an authority with God and favor with God. But Moses still had a flaws with anger. He got angry with the children of Israel. He even murdered a man. But God chooses us because he sees our ability to speak the word, teach the word. People will try to hold you back. Yes. They'll hold things against you. But your life is not based on people. Your life is based in the word. Amen. Moses wrote this, what we call the Torah, and, he, and his teachings is profound. He speaks about how holy God is, but he also speaks about the beginning of Eden. None of this would have taken place if they had never lost their place. They lost their place. And we're still fighting off the warfare of what they've done. You're talking about 2,000 years late, later. People still working job, two or three jobs now. Women are having babies, but they, some people, women are dying having babies. Yes. Those are predicaments. But God had a place for us where we could use our authority. Proverbs 18 and 21 says, uh, we're supposed to be able to call those things that be not as though they are. But life and death is in the power of the tongue, and those that speak of it shall eat thereof. Whatever you speak is what you become. You should be able to command things to take place, not with domination, with dominion, with power and authority. God has given us a tongue to speak things and believe what we speak. As a believer, we walk by faith and not by sight. You speak it, we call it, and it comes to pass. Well, that's prophetically speaking. God has given us that authority to say things, and it happened. That's why you have to be careful what you speak. If you keep telling yourself, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, you're going to start becoming sick. Yes, Lord, in the name. You're supposed to say, I'm healed. Yes, Lord. I'm healed. I believe that God is healing me. It's not based on your doctor. It's based upon the God that you serve. I tell people all the time, if you go to your doctor's office, always look at the wall. Practicing doctor. <laughs> and I guess who they're practicing on? Us. <laughs> My doctor wanted to keep giving me blood pressure pills. This one, this one, and this one. I said, first of all, I'm not a guinea pig. I'm a human being. Give me the pill and take the rest of them and put them back in the car. He gave me the pills. One by. You're not going to practice on them. Because all pills have a reaction. I'm still talking about dominion and authority. Some pills make people drowsy, lose their thoughts. Every pill is not made for this mind. So what you do, you take the word and you apply it to your life and ask God to heal that area. Some doctors will go back and take tests and say, you know what, we don't see this anymore. Amen. Not because of them, because you spoke what God gave you to speak. Use the authority and dominion of what God has given you. Romans 4 and 7 says, be able to call those things that be not as though they are. When you start calling things as they are, then you can walk in your healing. Then you can walk in your deliverance. Well, when you receive the Holy Ghost, Acts chapter number 2, then Acts chapter number 1, verse number 8, said, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power. Power is in what? The tongue. Speak it. Believe it. We walk by faith. We all have mustard seed faith. That's one level. And you have other levels of faith. God has given that to every believer. Use that which He's given you. Don't down yourself. Oh, I'm depressed. No. I'm glad to be alive. Amen. Oh, I'm sick. No, I'm healed. Yes. Oh, I'm going to die at an early age. If you keep speaking, it, you will die. Sure you. No, I'm going to live with longevity. You see what I'm saying? Speak it and believe what you're speaking. Oh, I'm broke. No, I'm rich in God's mercy. Amen. Oh, Lord, I need help with this bill. I don't have the money. No. The Bible says a cattle on a thousand hills belong to God. Psalms 50, verse number 10. Yes. Don't let the enemy trick you. Amen. Take them scriptures if you've got to write them down on paper and put them across the house. Lay hands on them. Yes. Believe what you speak. I had a bill here recently, about $200. I don't know where that comes from. I started laying hands and quoting scriptures. I cut off everything and began to pray. God, this bill will be paid in full. Two months later, it was paid in full. Now I overpaid the bill. I want my money back too, but it's all right. <laughs> but it's paid in full. You talk to God just like he talked to you. 
Yes. God never mislead his children. He gives you faith to believe and deal with those who come on staff the actual same level of faith. If you're around people who doubt, that's tearing down your spirit. Stay away from negative people, people who doubt, people are not walking with God. You can't walk with everybody. Amen. This journey. Oftentimes, when you hear from God, this is a lonely walk. Mm -hmm. You can't walk with everybody. There are some people God will place you around to help build up your faith. If someone's um, adding to you or to your character or to your beliefs, that's good. But if somebody's always tearing you down, you get away from that. Because a lot of us have already been broken and we don't need to be torn down any longer. If they all, somebody's always downing you, telling you that's not going to happen, that's a negative spirit. You don't need that type of surrounding around you. You're trying to overcome certain things that are going on in your life, and people come into your life and bring in things back, old memories, old addictions, old habits. You don't need to be around that. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be around that. If you're going to walk with God, walk with Him wholeheartedly. Amen. Psalm 15 says, who shall descend upon this holy hill? A man with clean hands and a pure heart. Amen. God wants our hearts pure before him. He's the one that operates on our heart. He's the one that sets us free. He's the one that delivers us from sins. From any type of things that we've ever had struggles with, is God that does the work. I always tell people, Jesus Christ is the only one that can do surgery on you and never leave a stop. Amen. But his blood heals everything. Yes, Lord. His blood heals everything. Walk with him. Not ahead of him. Walk behind him. In Christ, we move and we have our being. Still talking about the dominion. There's levels of walks in God. Everybody is not on the same spiritual wavelength. And stop telling people how holy you are. You don't have to talk to people how holy you are. We can see that. But every time God chooses someone, to us, they may be a little bit dysfunctional. Something may be a little off. Something to them is not on the same spiritual level of what you are. I told people this now, too, with wisdom. If you're gifted of God and you're anointed, both levels should be on the same level. If you're around here speaking prophetically and saying, God said, God said, God said, and turn around and see you doing something else. Something's off there. Then God didn't say that. That's you saying that. Mm -hmm. I, as like I said, I remember the old church mothers. They'd tell you to tap your shoulder at the service. You ain't got nothing. And then you sit down. We need some of the church mothers in this day to tell us where we're good, we're bad, and where we're off. They'll put you in your place. This goes beyond the pastor. And back then, the pastor gave the mother's permission to correct you. A church mother named Mother Jones, Maddie Jones, I miss her too. And she told me, she said, now you didn't got filled with the Holy Ghost. Now you walk with God. She said, son, develop a prayer life. Don't let all that space be around you. Stop praying and, and talking with the Lord and bring a scripture with you. Mother Jones taught me that years ago, back in 1990. And she rests in peace. And then mother, another mother named Mother Brown, Gladys Brown, told me the same thing. I guess they was on the same level of Mother Brown in the spirit. She said, I heard you did that feel. She said, now son, I want you to develop a prayer life. And I want you to study the word. Guess what? That wasn't to hurt me. That was to help me build up in the Lord. Because they probably sensed that the enemy was going to try to attack me and pull me back into the world. Mm -hmm. So they came to me with wisdom. Develop a prayer life. And look what I'm doing because of the, the, the women, the women of God. Amen. They, well, even my mother, you stayed with God. Before she left, you stayed with God. She said, I see what he's doing with you. And she went home to meet the Lord. Listen to the older saints that season and mature, and you can go somewhere. You'll learn something. That's why I talk to people who are like in their 60s, 70s, and their 80s. Because they can tell you something. Yes, Lord. Sure. To help get you on your destiny or your assignment. Never talk to the person that's on your same age. 
You have to have the same blend. When somebody who's wise and full of wisdom can help you go when you're supposed to go. So you have to use a lot of wisdom when you start walking in authority with power, dominion with God. As I said, everybody can't speak into your life. Everybody's not going where you're going. Everybody's destiny is different, but it still comes from the same God. Don't allow servants to miss get in your ears and tell you lies. Become keen in a prayer life. When I say keen, develop a prayer life. If you have to pray 15 or 30 minutes per day, that's good. But you don't have to announce everybody to everyone what you pray. That's not anyone's business. What you pray. The prayer life is a private thing with God. Now, with the old church brothers told you, wash your face, anoint your head, get your scriptures, get your prayer walk. And you sit there and you talk with God. Cut, cut your, your phones off, cut your TV off. Really become dedicated so God can groom you. Mm -hmm. Steps. You're not going to get this overnight. Because there have been plenty of times I wanted to quit. You can't quit this. You can't quit. Once you start with God, He starts with you. He's going to lead you in the path of righteousness. Once you get in this, there's no looking back. Mm -hmm. Once you start this, this is not time to think about going back into the world. There's nothing out there. The truth is, is, once you say that I heard, there's some people in the world that do treat you better than church folks. Yes. If you ain't never heard that before, I've heard it. But then there's some saints in the church that are really genuine. That's going to help you stay in the Lord. And they ain't going to mislead you. But you don't put your trust in people. Put your trust in His Word. Amen. It's the Word that's going to keep you. It's the Word that's going to cover you. It's the Word that's going to guide you. You can't listen to everybody. You watch folks that's always calling you. And call two or three times out of the day. If somebody calling you that much, they're up to no good. Amen. Either they're trying to pull on you or they're just trying to misguide you. You ever talk to somebody on the phone for almost an hour and you feel drained? 